What's up guys, Paul here from ecommercegold.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be taking you through a step-by-step -step guide of how you can set up your e-commerce website so you're going to lay the foundations to potentially build a very successful e-commerce business. Now there's quite a lot of information I'm going to cover in this video so you might want to go and get yourself a drink and also get yourself a notepad as well and make some notes because there's going to be quite a few things that I cover that you might want to refer back to. So that said, let's get started. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to secure yourself a domain name because this is the address from which you're going to build everything out from and it's also where your customers are going to visit you and where your customers are going to buy from. Now to get yourself a domain name you want to go through what's called a domain name registrar and my advice is never to go with one that offers free or introductory rates because generally you'll pay a lot more for the second year and also if you want to transfer your name to another domain name registrar they'll generally charge you for it. It's better to pay a little bit more to start with and go with a very reputable company who aren't going to charge you a lot to renew your license in the second year. So that is my first bit of advice. Now when it comes to domain names there are a few kind of guidelines you want to stick to. There's no hard and fast rules when it comes to domain names but there are a few kind of guidelines you want to stick to that's going to make your domain name a bit better than potentially a lot of other websites. Now the first thing is you do want to keep it pretty simple. Ideally you want it to be less than 20 characters long and less than three words long. This is just because it's going to be so much easier for people to remember. Um, when you start getting into multiple words, more than three, or you get to a lot of characters, there's more chance of people either A, misspelling it, or B, not remembering what your domain name is. So you want to keep it as simple as possible. The second thing when it comes to domain names is you want you don't want to hyphenate it because people are going to forget to type the hyphen in. And the main reason why people go for hyphenated domain names is because the ideal one without the hyphen isn't available. And if this is linked to an active business, what you could be doing is potentially sending customers who are looking for you to your competitor's website and that's something you don't want to be doing. So don't go for a hyphenated domain name, instead go for a kind of alternative version if the one you want isn't available. And the third thing is you want to stick to what we call top level domain names and these are your .coms and your national ones. So for here in the UK it's .co.uk. You can get away with .net as well, that's a pretty common one, but Anything that's a bit more obscure, so if you're like .london, .business, .biz, people aren't going to remember that that's what they need to type in at the end of the domain name. We're conditioned to type .com, we're conditioned to type .co.uk and you want to make it as easy for people to remember your domain name, which is generally the thing that runs through all of these points is you want it easy to remember and make it so people aren't going to make mistakes when they're typing your domain name in. Yes, not a lot of traffic is going to come to you typing your domain name directly in, but you want to make it as memorable as possible just in case they come back to you in the future. So that's why you want to keep it short and simple. You don't want to hyphenate and you want to stick to top level domain names. So that is where we start and that is the first thing you need to do is secure your domain name. And the second thing you want to do is you want to choose an e-commerce platform and there are a huge number to choose from out there. Some are really, really good. Some are not so good, but it all depends on you and your business as to which one you need to go for. And they fall into two main categories. And the first is, which I recommend for most people who are just getting into e-commerce who have never run a website before, and that is a fully hosted solution. This is where you pay a monthly fee to a platform and they provide you with um, with hosting that's usually e-commerce grade and you also get an e-commerce web builder as well. And this is all combined in one package yeah, and this works really, really well because you get a combination of good performance, good security and most importantly, you don't have to worry about any of the technical aspects of running a website. You don't have to worry about configuring your servers, making sure that your web build is updated. That's all part and parcel of the package which is why I generally do recommend these especially for people who are just getting started because it's just the easiest way to get started. The second option is what we call a self-hosted solution and this is where you need to find your own web hosting so you need to find a web host who offers e-commerce kind of level performance hosting and then you need to decide which software you want to install on it. Now if you decide to go for the self-hosted option it is generally cheaper but there's more responsibility on you as the website owner because you are responsible for the performance of the website you're also responsible for the security of the website and if there's any technical difficulties 
it's your problem to sort it out. You haven't got anybody you can really call up, say, why is this happening? You're responsible for the day-to-day -day running of your website. You haven't got anybody you can call on, which unless you've got a history in web development, web design, or you've run websites before, I generally wouldn't recommend this as the way to go. Instead, go with a fully hosted solution because you get everything included in one package. But that is the choice you need to make. And fortunately, you can try a lot of these platforms out before you even get started. With the fully hosted solutions, they all offer free trials. So go and take them up on it. You get generally 14 to 28 days, somewhere in that region, to test the platform out and you'll generally know within a couple of days whether or not you click with the platform. Try as many out as you can because you might find that the one that everybody recommends doesn't really work well for you or you don't like using it but you might find that another one does everything you want to and you find it really really easy to use. You can also do this with the self-hosted solutions as well. Get yourself some cheap web hosting it should cost you about five pounds for the month and what you can do is you can install these different programs obviously you can only install them one at a time but you could install say open cart try it out see if you like it then press the shop then wordpress plus woocommerce and do this process and see which one you like and see which one you click with. So that is the second thing is to choose which e-commerce platform you want to go with. As I say, take advantage of all their free trials, test them all out and see which one works best for you and your business. Now, even though a lot of people say there is a best platform out there, generally there isn't. There's the best platform for you and your business and that is the thing that you need to find out and that's the most important thing. And that leads me onto point number three, which is designing your website. Now, a lot of people are going to think this is the just the aesthetics of your website, but there's a lot more that goes into this. You also need to plan and design the layout of your website. So yes, the aesthetics are important. You want it to fit your brand and you want it to fit your business. You want it to look nice and you want it to be appealing to the customer. But on the second part of it, you want to make sure that it works really, really well. So you want to design your product hierarchy, your category hierarchy. Does it flow? Is it easy for people to navigate their way around the site? Is it easy for people to find information? Is it e easy for people to access images? Is it easy for people to find your contact pages? This is a very important part of designing your website, is designing the flow of your website. It's something a lot of people overlook, but it's hugely important because you probably know yourself, you've been onto somebody's website and it's just really, really frustrating to use. It's really not easy to use. You want your site to be as easy to use as possible. So think about it. Think about a logical flow of how you want people to navigate the way around your website. How are they going to get from page A to page B? Is it easy? Is there a logical flow to it? Think this out. Sometimes it can be as simple as just drawing it out on a piece of paper, almost drawing like a family tree. So you start off with your home page, then you've got your main categories, then you go down to your subcategories and your sub subcategories. Plan it out so it makes logical sense. It's going to make things so much easier for you in the long run of running your business, especially when your business starts to grow. You're already going to have this hierarchy in place, so it's going to be easier to assign products to categories and then even categories into subcategories. It's just going to make your life a lot easier in the long run to plan out the design of your website, not only from an aesthetic point of view, but also from a user point of view as well. And the fourth thing you want to do is you want to sort out your payment gateways. This is hugely important because you need a way of getting paid unless you want to give everything away for free but that's not a very good e-commerce business. But no, seriously, you do need to sort out your payment gateways. And I say gateways because it's always better to offer your customers more than one option. This is because some people may not like using a certain payment method. So the best one to go for, especially if you're just starting out, is a combination of PayPal and a credit card processor. And the best one, if you're just starting out, is Stripe. The reason why I recommend these two is they both offer what's called a pay-as-you-go solution. So you only pay when you use their service so you only pay when you get an order it's not like going with a more traditional payment gateway something like say world pay or sage pay something like that where you have to pay a monthly fee and it doesn't matter whether you sell or not you still have to pay this monthly fee so i always recommend going for these pay-as-you-go solutions because it's just so much easier and so much more cost effective especially when you're just getting started yes you may want to review these in the future but when you're just starting out, you want to keep costs as low as possible and sign up to a long-term monthly contract with one of these more traditional payment gateways 
isn't a great way to start your business. Instead, go for a pay-as-you-go solution. And one thing you can think about using as well, um, especially when your business starts to grow, is to offer some kind of retail finance. Now, this used to be a really exclusive thing and only available to big businesses, but there's a new company, it's actually a bank from Sweden called Klarna, and they offer a variety of different payment options, and they're becoming very, very popular in the e-commerce space just because of the flexibility they offer. So you may want to check those guys out as well. Um, they may not be ideal when you're just starting out, but when you start generating sales like six, 12 months in, you definitely want to think about checking those guys out because they offer a really good, really flexible payment option. And that leads me onto point number five, which is to set up your delivery methods. Now, this is really, really important because by this point, you've pretty much got your website set up, you've got your products on there, you've got a way of getting paid. Now you need to figure out how you're going to get your products from you to your customer. Now, if you're selling digital products, you don't have to worry about this because depending on the platform, it'll either give a link as soon as they go through the checkout process or it will email them a link so they can download the product. So that's really, really simple. This is purely for physical products. Now, you've probably already thought about how you're gonna do this, but you need to get this set up on your website and you need to make it clear how your delivery methods are gonna work. So when a customer's going through the checkout, don't just say free delivery because free delivery doesn't really cover it. Say what the delivery method is. So free raw mail first class delivery, for example. You can also add like add on options. So say you offer raw mail first class for free. You can have a second option where they could choose for express delivery. So they could have next day, say special delivery, which is another option that you charge for. Have all this set up, have it ready to go and make sure it's clear for your customer to understand how you're gonna deliver it to them. Yeah, just generally saying free delivery isn't really that great. Instead, inform the customer as much as you can because then it sets their like delivery expectations because if they know it's gonna be free second class they know it's going to be a couple of days wait whereas if it's just free delivery and you don't say what the delivery time period is it's not really covering it so when you set your delivery methods up make sure that they're clearly labeled also that they're clearly priced as well because if you do charge for delivery make sure it's clearly priced on your website and when you are setting up your delivery methods it's always worth having a delivery page on your website especially if you do charge for delivery so people can clearly see this before they get to the checkout because it's one of the biggest reasons for abandoned carts. Just a quick tip for you there. Um, always be clear and upfront about your delivery charges. Don't wait to the last minute to drop them on them. So always be clear and upfront. And point number six is to make sure your website's legal. I see so many people make this mistake of not having the correct things on their website. It's a business, it's a legal entity, it's a legal sales outlet for you. So you've got to make sure your business website is legal. The most important thing you need to have is your privacy policy because this has got to comply with GDPR regulations here in the UK. And you've got to make sure that your website is compliant on these things. And you do have to do a bit of research. You do need to understand the basic principles of what this applies to. The second thing when it comes to e-commerce is you need to have a terms and conditions page on your website, which covers everything to do with your website. So it's how people use your website, how people interact with your website. You also want to throw everything to do with the e-commerce thing in there. So your pricing, your payments, your delivery methods, everything to do with the transaction you want listed in your terms and conditions. And it's always worth getting these two things checked out before you launch your website, because it's quite easy to get yourself in hot water if you've listed something in your terms and conditions and that turns out not to be legal and people can like launch court case against you. So it's always worth getting these things checked out by an e-commerce expert or e-commerce lawyer. Get them all checked out, make sure they're legal, make sure they comply with every single regulation. So GDPR, also make sure that you comply with distance selling regulations as well. That's a big one that people fall short on. And you just need to, one, make sure they're legal. You also need to understand it as well. So take some time, read through it, and see if there's anything specific for your business. I had to research some things when I had my business because I was selling jewelry, and there was some things that come under personal hygiene, um, earrings, for example, and I needed to learn how that applied to my business. So always make sure that you understand it so you're not gonna get caught short when there is an issue further down the line. So that's it, always make sure your site's legal. On a second point, on a kind of secondary point on that, I would also suggest adding lots of information pages to your website. So 
as I mentioned before, delivery method, make sure you've got a separate page for returns. Don't bury everything in your terms and conditions. You wanna be kind of upfront and transparent about these things. So for me, I always create separate pages for these. So delivery and payments, um, returns process, all those on separate pages because it just makes it easier for your customers to understand how your website works and also you're not trying to hide everything you've been upfront and open with everything and point number seven is you want to test your website out you want to run some test transactions through the site make sure that everything's working as it should because by this point you should have built your website you should have your payment gateway set up your delivery methods all this kind of stuff set in place so people can do a transaction on your site you need to make sure that works properly. A lot of people that I've dealt with and spoke to across the years have made that mistake of they think everything's going to work. Don't assume that it's going to work. Instead, test and test and test again. I dread to think how many test transactions I've run through my websites over the years. Um, even when the site's up and running, I'll still do some test transactions just to make sure everything is still running smoothly. And if you're happy with everything working, then get friends and family to test it out for you. Get them to do some test orders and then you can process it and get their feedback on how they think the, the process works because there might be something that they're quite not happy with especially if you get the same feedback off a couple of people so always test the website out before you go live it's the best way to do it it's better to learn about the problems before your site goes live than have customers contacting you saying i can't do this i can't do that i can't do this always test it before you go live i can't emphasize that point enough Yes, it might be boring, but you're also going to learn how the platform works. You're going to understand what it's like to process an order. You're going to understand what it's like to refund an order. That's another thing. Refund the orders. Make sure you know how to cancel, refund, and say, test it. You're not just testing to make sure that it works. You're also testing it to make sure that you know how to do everything. Because this is so much easier to do in a testing environment than it is to do in a live environment. So... Once again, this is really, really important. Make sure you test your website fully. Yes, there's probably gonna be things that come up that you're not gonna anticipate, but to start with, always make sure you test it, get other people to test it, and you will know if there's any problems with your website, whether it could be your payment gateway is not working properly, it could be your delivery methods aren't processing properly, anything, just make sure you test it. I hope I've labored on that point enough that you do need to test your website. And the final point is get started um i have come across lots of people over the years who have said yeah i'm going to build my website i'm going to build my website next week i'm going to build it next month and you know what i speak to them in a year's time they still haven't set up their website if you're going to do it do it get started make that commitment and actually do it even if you just set out the blueprint for how you're going to do it and you're going to do it. week one i'm going to get my domain name week two i'm going to test out um so and so platforms week three i'm going to start building it make sure you actually get started because without getting started you're not going to build your site without building your site you're not going to start getting sales without getting sales you're not going to have an e-commerce business it's as simple as that so make sure you do get started and the process that i've laid out in this video is what i've done on my websites for the past few years it's what i've refined from building quite a few different e-commerce sites and it does work because it's got a logical flow to it so I'll leave a link in the description below to my actual blog post on this, where I do cover things in possibly a little bit more detail than I have in this video, uh, just because there's so much to cover in one video. So I'll leave a link in the description below for that. I'll also leave a link in the description to um, what I think are the best e-commerce platforms that you can choose as well, which kind of complements this video quite well. So I hope you've all enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd really, really appreciate it if you could hit that like button. And also if you wanna learn more about this, then subscribe to the channel. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome and I'll see you on the next video.